Russia took the rotating presidency of the BRICS Group in 2024. Yuri Vashakov, Russian presidential foreign policy aide, has granted Tayas an interview in which he previewed Moscow's priorities, prospects for BRICS development and expansion, and commented on the West's attempts to impede the association's activities. While speaking about the priorities of Russia's BRICS presidency, Vladimir Putin mentioned the development of economic partnership, cooperation in science and innovation, security and counterterrorism, culture and sports. How do you prioritize these guidelines? Which aspect of BRICS activities is of particular value to us, political, economic or civilizational? First of all, I would like to say that cooperation within BRICS is undoubtedly one of the key features of Russia's long-term foreign policy. Interaction with the association's members meets the fundamental national interest of our country and fits in well with our systematic policy to forming a fair multipolar world order and creating equal opportunities for all countries to develop. As the Russian president said in his message published on January 1 on the occasion of the beginning of Russia's BRICS presidency, in 2024 we will focus our efforts on promoting the entire range of partnership and cooperation within the framework of the association on three key tracks, politics and security, the economy and finance, and cultural and humanitarian ties. All these three guidelines are of fundamental and equal importance. They have been identified as the priorities of the Russian presidency, which will be held under the common motto, strengthening multilateralism for equitable global development and security. Let me emphasize that Russia is approaching the BRICS presidency with great enthusiasm and diligence. A comprehensive concept of the Russian presidency has been approved. To implement it, an interdepartmental steering committee for preparing and ensuring Russia's BRICS case presidency in 2024 has been established under a presidential decree. This body, which I have been assigned to head, is responsible for coordinating the participation of Russian federal and regional authorities, parliamentary, business and non-governmental organizations in BRICS the mechanisms, and, in general, all issues related to the Russian presidency, including the preparation of meetings at various levels, and, of course, the BRICS summit. The steering committee meets on a regular basis. Working groups have been set up within its framework to oversee foreign policy, financial and organizational issues. All government ministries and agencies, non-governmental organizations and other structures promptly report to the steering committee on the progress made and results achieved. In December 2023, the steering committee approved a large-scale plan for events under the auspices of the Russian presidency. There are about 250 such events to be held in a dozen Russian cities. It is noteworthy that ever more requests are pouring in for hosting additional events in important areas of cooperation within the BRICS framework. Up-to-date information on what exactly is being implemented and planned is regularly uploaded to the website of our presidency, rics-russia2024.ru. The Beraisia Summit in Kazan on October 22-24 will be the key event of the Russian presidency, of course. Moreover, it will be the first Beraisia Summit following the group's enlargement. Let me remind you that at the meeting of BRICS leaders in Johannesburg last August, a decision was made to invite new members to the association. Starting from January 1, it includes 10 countries. The twofold increase in the number of BRICS members undoubtedly opens up vast prospects for the further strengthening of the role and authority of our association internationally. At the same time, of course, Russia, as the current president of the organization, has a special responsibility to ensure the fastest and smoothest integration of the new members into the operation of all BRICS mechanisms. This is undoubtedly a cornerstone and high-priority task of our presidency. What is the reason behind the choice of Kazan as the venue of the 2024 BRICS summit? That Kazan was chosen as the venue for the summit is no coincidence. All essentials are in place for the city to host a meeting of world leaders at a decent level. There is a well-developed transportation network, tourist infrastructure, and, in general, a comfortable, modern urban environment. The leadership of the Republic of Tatarstan, I should say, has gotten the hang of it and has been hosting various international forums with great success for many years. Steering committee members make frequent trips to Kazan to monitor in real-time mode all preparations for the summit and for the meeting of numerous delegations of the BRICS member countries. The steering committee stays in touch with the leadership of Tatarstan, with all those who are responsible for specific tasks facing the city ahead of such a large-scale event. The steering committee keeps a close watch on what is being done to ready more than 50 city hotels and other facilities for the accommodation of foreign heads of state and government and the accompanying officials and personnel. Due attention is paid to ensuring that the room stock should meet the highest standards of comfort and safety requirements. The local authorities are tightly engaged in upgrading infrastructure and improving urban areas selected to accommodate the guests and, of course, in preparing the sites of the summit's events. The leaders' negotiations and key meetings will take place inside the Kazan Expo International Exhibition Center. This is a unique compound, one of Russia's largest and most modern in terms of technical equipment. Kazan Expo was built to host large-scale events for tens of thousands of guests. Just recently, it saw the opening ceremony of the Games of the Future, attended by the President of Russia and a number of foreign heads of state. The compound's location is very convenient. It is a five-minute ride from the airport and a 20-minute ride along the expressway from the center of Kazan. 
Free shuttle bus services will also be available for all Kazan Expo guests throughout the summit. Now, back to the program of Russia's BRICS presidency. I would like to mention that many events have already taken place. In particular, the BRICS finance ministers and central bank governors meeting, the BRICS senior officials committee meeting on energy, expert consultations on information security, anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism, the youth volunteer conference, and the BRICS nuclear medicine working group session have already taken place. The Sherpas and South Sherpas from the member states responsible for the substantive content of the BRICS cooperation agenda maintain regular communication. At the end of January and beginning of February, they met in Moscow. In other words, the official schedule of BRICS events in 2024 is very tight and eventful, and the range of themes, multifaceted and ambitious. Will BRICS remain a club of big countries, or can smaller states also aspire accession? Let me start with a quick look back at the history of BRICS. The very acronym BRIC, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, was coined in 2001 by a Western analyst, Jim O'Neill of Goldman Sachs, who, having studied the economic potential of the developing countries, arrived at the conclusion that these four countries would determine the direction of the world economy and politics in the XI century. In fact, he forecast the creation of our association. Just five years later, in 2006, on the sidelines of the 61st session of the UN General Assembly in New York, the foreign ministers of Russia, Brazil and China and India's defense minister held a special separate meeting to agree to develop diversified cooperation on a four-party platform. In 2009, the first ever summit of the four countries was held in Yekaterinburg. In the final joint statement, they agreed to develop consistent, active, pragmatic, open and transparent dialogue and cooperation not only to the benefit of the developing countries and emerging markets, but also to build a harmonious world order that would ensure lasting peace and shared prosperity. The question arose as to what the association should be called, it turned out that the initially academic term BRIC was quite suitable. This is what we agreed on with our Brazilian, Indian, and Chinese counterparts. With the accession of the Republic of South Africa in 2011, another letter, S, was added to the BRIC acronym. In the relatively short period of its existence, the BRICS Association has rapidly developed and transformed into an extensive multi-level mechanism of interaction on a wide range of issues on the global agenda. In particular, I would like to mention the BRICS Summit in UFA in 2015, which saw the emergence of the first financial institutions of the association, the New Development Bank, and the Contingent Reserve Arrangement, with a combined financial reserve of $200 billion. This clearly demonstrated the growing influence of our countries on the global economy. By the way, BRICS has already surpassed the Group of Seven in terms of purchasing power parity. The group accounts for 35.6% of the global GDP, while the G7 accounts for 30.3%. By 2028, the situation will evolve further in BRICS' favor, 36.6% versus 27.8%. It is no coincidence that our president drew attention to this in his address to the Federal Assembly. The collective share of the member states in the global economy is $58.9 trillion. RICS accounts for more than one-third of the Earth's dry land, 36%, 45% of the world's population, 3.6 billion, over 40% of all oil production, and about a quarter of the world's exports of goods. Such a high prestige and a really serious constructive role of BRICS in the world economy and politics naturally attract the attention of other countries, which have begun to show a desire to join the association's activities in one way or another. Many perceive BRICS as a prototype of multipolarity, a structure uniting the global South and East on the principles of equality, sovereignty, and mutual respect. BRICS approached last year's 15th summit in Johannesburg with a whole package of applications for accession from more than 20 countries. Therefore, the summit made a fundamental political decision to expand the association. Thorough work was carried out to determine the range of countries to be admitted in the first place. As a result, an agreement was reached to invite six countries, Egypt, Iran, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, and Argentina, to enter BRICS as full members starting from January 1. By the way, it was also agreed at that time to keep unchanged the name BRICS, which is well recognized in the world, even after the enlargement. This allows us, among other things, to further emphasize the continuity of our work in the association, as well as the key role of the founding countries. When can we see another round of BRICS expansion? Given the expansion that has taken place, Russia's BRICS presidency this year has a special mission to ensure a smooth incorporation of all new members of the association, while at the same time preserving and enhancing all the achievements accumulated over years and preserving and developing the experience of effective cooperation. For this purpose, first of all, we will focus on the organic integration of newcomers into the architecture of partnership mechanisms and on familiarizing them with BRICS culture that has been established over 15 years. Federal executive authorities have a clear task, in close coordination with the Russian Foreign Ministry to actively and proactively involve the five new countries in the BRICS processes to brief them on how cooperation in the association is organized in practice. This is the case with the new BRICS members that have already been admitted. However, 
the number of those wishing to establish some cooperation with our association continues to grow. Whereas by the Johannesburg Summit, as I mentioned above, there were just over 20 of them, today we have received a number of new applications. Although it is premature to speculate about a second wave of expansion, all the countries of the association agree that the interest toward BRICS, displayed by many countries, can only be welcomed and encouraged. This clearly demonstrates that the principles on which our association operates are very close to a wide range of countries, in fact, to the global majority. In this connection, I recall that another important decision was made in Johannesburg. It concerns the development of a new form of interaction between BRICS and non-member countries. The issue on the agenda is to define the modalities of a new special category of BRICS partner states, which would participate in cooperation on specific projects in both the political and economic spheres. Under its new president, Argentina has decided against joining BRICS. Will the association keep the door open to that country? As for Argentina, as is known, the presidential election was held there at the end of last year. The new Argentine administration declared that it did not see its country as a member of BRICS and sent official letters to all. Heads of State of the Quintet This was the choice of the Argentine authorities, and it should, of course, be respected. But, in principle, in terms of its political and economic importance, that country is certainly worthy of being a member of our association. Have there emerged any clear criteria for BRICS candidates to meet? Throughout its presidency, Russia shall be working on the criteria for selecting and nominating such partner countries. Both these yardsticks and a specific list of likely partners are to be agreed upon by all BRICS members and submitted to the Kazan summit for approval. It is quite logical that, in the future, as partner countries gain experience of cooperation within the framework of various BRICS mechanisms, their applications for full membership will also be considered. In discussing specific candidates, of course, the political and economic weight of this or that candidate country and its place not only in its region, but also in the international arena as a whole will be borne in mind. Support for the principles of multipolarity and a greater role of developing countries in global governance, as well as the fundamental values of the BRICS group, such as the spirit of equality, mutual respect, openness, inclusiveness, and constructive cooperation, is an indispensable condition. But of course, the well-tested mode of interaction with friends and like-minded countries, outreach slash BRICS plus, will stay effective. In fact, this is an ad hoc platform where the leaders of states keen to make their own constructive contribution to the discussion of crucial issues on the international and regional agendas are invited to the BRICS summits. For instance, last year our South African friends invited a wide range of African countries to the summit in Johannesburg. This year, Russia is planning to hold an outreach slash BRICS plus summit meeting in Kazan by inviting the heads of member states and heads of executive bodies of the Eurasian Economic Union, the Commonwealth of Independent States, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and possibly a number of other countries and regional organizations. How do you see the Western countries' attitude to BRICS? Are there any signs some of them may be interested in joining the association? It is all quite clear. They are certainly not delighted to see the BRICS growing authority and influence. Let us be honest, they are outspokenly jealous about its expansion, as well as about the fact that the countries of the global majority would like to unite more closely for cooperation on the BRICS platform. We have seen considerable evidence of the Western opponents trying to hamstring and weaken our association. To put it in a nutshell, BRICS, as well as the very objective process of creating a new world order, have irreconcilable opponents who are determined to impede this process and prevent the establishment of new independent centers of development and influence in the world. BRICS does not compete with anyone, nor does it challenge anyone. It is not an anti-Western association. By the way, our president has stressed this many a time. Economic and financial cooperation is the most important field of BRICS activities. As is well known, the new development bank is up and running under the group. There is also the contingent reserve arrangement, which makes it possible, when necessary, to properly react to crisis processes in the global economy. The possible introduction of a single BRICS currency has recently been under discussion in the expert community. In addition, President Putin has repeatedly highlighted the importance of cooperation in the humanitarian area, as well as in the fields of culture and sports. Could you please tell us more about the ideas and proposals that the Russian presidency has prepared for BRICS partners on the above mentioned issues? That's where we wrap things up for the time being. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.